Good morning and welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week we are talking all about dahlias and the care of them late season. The last few days we have had temperatures over 100 degrees. I think it's been around 109. I think one day it was about 114. At least that's what it was registering. I'm not sure if it was actually that. But normally we're in the 80s, 90s here in the Pacific Northwest. We haven't had really any rain since May. It's a dry, very stressful for a lot of plants, especially when we typically are in that range of 80s to 90s. And then all of a sudden we hit over 100 for three days in a row. Very, very hard, it stresses plants. And so that's when you need to, in the garden, or at least me, I'm speaking for myself, and you can apply it where it applies, right? <laughs> Gardening is all different for everybody. So in our zone and what our farm is like, then what happens is, a lot of our plants kind of get stressed. So we do a few things, especially when it gets this hot so quickly and the plants are just like, eek, something's wrong. We tend to really start to focus on fertilizing and watering and sufficient watering, making sure each plant has what they need, um, especially because we are cutting so heavily, especially on our dahlias, partly for our mixed bouquets, weddings, events, things that we're doing. So we really like to pay attention uh, to the bug pressure, especially because when things like this happen, when you have that fluctuation of temperature, the bugs go, hello, um, I'm going to take advantage of that. So uh, we really want to just be able to make sure that the plants are as healthy as they possibly can. And that starts with fertilizing. So dahlias are, it's an individual thing. Uh, you should know what your soil is and isn't by doing a soil test at the beginning of the year. Uh, we don't always do that. Uh, a lot of times if you're a gardener that does not do that you and you have gardened for a long time, you probably will kind of watch your plants, be observant, see what they need. It's kind of like children, you know. If you're an observant parent, you kind of sense when they're a little bit, you know, under the weather, they're a little stressed. So I pay attention to things like that. And, 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 and plants and flowers and dahlias in particular, was what we're talking about today, are kind of like that. So if you're observant, then you don't necessarily have to do a soil test every year. I would suggest that you do it maybe other, every other. Long time ago, they didn't have soil tests. You know, you just had to observe and know, and that's what, you know, how you got along. And this year we've hardly planted any dahlias at all. Uh, last year we had, oh, uh, what was it? 800, 900 dahlias between the two farms. And this year we uh, got rid of a whole bunch of dahlias. We just selected a few that we liked for our weddings and we brought them all back here on the farm. So I'm downscaling just a little bit. I don't love dahlias. I don't love growing them. We don't have a great storage system for them. There's a lot of reasons for it. So um, this is what we've chosen to do, I think. I don't even know how many plants we have this year. We have some in the garden and we have some out here. I would estimate a couple hundred maybe at the most. Not much. So anyways, I'm gonna take you through kind of what we're doing. Now, a couple weeks ago, I made a compost tea and I'm going to be using a compost tea as a foliator. If you have comfrey, it makes for a great foliator. So a fertilizer that you would spray on the leaves. If you don't, you can just do a compost tea. If you want to, uh, you can just use like a fish fertilizer at the base, you can do whatever. Now you wanna make sure that you do this in the cool of the day. You want to make sure that it's not gonna to be too hot. If you are fertilizing like this, definitely on a cloudy overcast day is great. All that being said, I've been known to do it not on all those things and my plants have been fine, but this little section here does get quite a bit of shade. And so I'm able to work it a little bit easier, I guess, than if it was direct sun from morning to night. Dahlias do need about six to eight hours of sun to produce lots and lots of blooms. We do not stake our dahlias. You'll see that here. Um, partly because we cut our dahlias so heavily, we're cutting once to twice a day. There's not a lot of blooms. It's not that beautiful, just over a abundant uh, blooms. There's times where I leave it and let it go to bloom and that's usually when we have a class or something like that on the farm. But for the most part we're cutting every single morning, every single night. And part of it is we don't use pesticides and that helps prevent us from uh, having bug damage on the blooms. So we're cutting so heavy that they just don't have time to munch them. And if they do, it's like one little petal or two and you can kind of pluck those out. But um, what else? I think that's it for now. Emma's gonna help me here in just a minute. I'm gonna go recharge my battery because it's dying. go get 
that fertilizer. What are we using today, Emma? <laughs> we are gonna be using some fish emulsion. So it's sea and land mixture. It has seaweed and fish, but it's pretty low in um, nitrogen, which is what we want because our dahlias are already pretty full grown and what we're looking for is more blooms not so much helping the growth of the plant because they're already growing technically you're supposed to fertilize every three to four weeks and we've just been really busy and we're, this is our reminder we need to do this really bad but we've been doing really good at watering so we have a really good watering system going through our dahlia field and it's getting really deep getting to the roots and so our dahlias have been very forgiving and they're looking really good and i think it helps that we cut on them too because they grow they grow more and they're not just for show the other problem that we're kind of facing is the location of our field so our field is pretty close to the road and that is why we are planting some sunflowers right across from them because they'll grow tall and kind of block all that dust coming through. So today we are just looking through, seeing what needs to be done. I think there's there might be a little bit of spider mite um, coming on just because of the dust and so we're just checking for things, making sure they're all good. So I'm getting ready to go get the fertilizer. So it's been about three weeks since we made this together. This is our comfrey tea mixture. Smells lovely like bacteria. So what I'm gonna do with that comfrey is I've gotta sift it, or basically there's a lot of like sticks. There's a lot of stick and debris. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and get a little basket to strain it through so that I can spray it through a sprayer. Otherwise it's gonna get clogged and it's just gonna be really frustrating. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna put it in a backpack sprayer and get that going. So my plan today is with the comfrey tea just because it has all the stick and debris in it. I'm gonna use, um, behind me I have a compost tea system and this is from Grower's Solution. I've had it for years and I use it as just a compost tea maker basically we take our compost put it in the basket let it soak for a while and then um, we use it as a foliar spray usually in the spring a lot of times but today we're going to be using it with the comfrey tea if you didn't have something like this i would just strain it out with a fine sift strainer and i'd probably do it a couple times if you're putting it in a backpack sprayer just because you know they get clogged and then it's really irritating. So today I am putting on a new nylon. So this is an old nylon that I used to wear to fancy parties and I don't do that very often, but this is just, um, we just take the end of it and we basically take a piece of it, cut it and put it on the end of it. And that is what we use as a sift. So inside of it, it has this basket here. So that's one sieve and then you use a secondary one, which is like a stocking on the very end of it. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go get a bucket, kind of dip in, pour it through this. And then that way I'm just gonna add water to it so that you basically use one part comfrey tea to 10 parts of water. So you want it pretty weak. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna fill it through the backpack sprayer, go spray the dahlias before the sun comes up. Hopefully, I'm trying to beat the sun. It's best made plans sometimes don't always work. We've had some beautiful, beautiful days here on the farm. Sunsets, sunrises, um, end of August, first of September, even into October, beautiful. And we've had a little bit of smoke from a fire that's close to us. And um, yesterday it kind of blew out a little bit and it just made for this gorgeous pink sunset and just this, you know, the sun comes up and it's just kind of blood red. So there are pros and cons to having fires or being in fire season. This is kind of a new weather system for us here in the Pacific Northwest. We used to never have this, but now it's just a regular thing. We just have fires every single August, September. So I wanted to say a special thanks to Jason and Brooke over at Coghill Farm for bringing us or sending us a beautiful box of their new coffee line, which is absolutely delicious. Um, Ryan, the roast, Ryan, the roaster, <laughs> the roaster, Ryan, 
uh, put together a really nice selection for us. And uh, so that's what I'm drinking this morning, which is super great, helpful because um, as you know, I am like the coffee connoisseur and Pacific Northwest, we're just kind of coffee snobs and this one is great. So I'll put a link below if you're interested in supporting uh, Coghill Farm and all the great work that they do over there with their beautiful gardens, vegetable gardens, flower gardens, uh, all the things. It's just a fun channel to watch. So we really appreciate the support here with the coffee. <laughs> Is really rich in potassium and that's what these dahlias absolutely love in order to do this you kind of have to look at the coloring of your comfrey tea ours is pretty dark so I'm going to dilute it a little bit more than you would normally so usually it's one part comfrey tea to ten parts of water and in our case I'm gonna use a backpack sprayer and I'm gonna be spraying it out so I'm gonna go with about a cup of comfrey tea to one gallon of water because I'm not gonna fill up the backpack sprayer completely, partly because it just gets super, super heavy and it's not super good for you to be carrying around, or at least me, I don't like to carry that heavy of a weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that and get spraying. So I'm just gonna eyeball about three cups. So when it comes to spraying, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind. Um, one is the wind. You don't want to be spraying with anything over 11 miles an hour. Uh, I like to spray first thing in the morning when I have absolutely no wind. Evening tends to have high winds for us here. So just kind of know that. Uh, the other thing is to wear appropriate clothing for what you're spraying. We're using everything organic right now so we're pretty good with what we have on I have shorts I do have a long sleeve on just because I am doing a spray um, if you have like a little bit of like bronchial issues or lung issues I'd recommend wearing some sort of mask while you're doing that and depending on what you're using like if you're using a you know a pesticide or something like that then I would highly suggest that you wear lots of clothing. Wear like a long sleeve, long pants, long socks, boots, mask, gloves. And then as soon as you're done, if you're doing that, which I do not recommend, but if you do do that, that's what you should wear. I would peel off everything, even outside, and make sure you get those clothes washed right away. Go take a shower. I would recommend cold shower. 
Uh, that's one reason we don't use it here on our farm. We use organic products if we're going to use any type of spray, which we hardly ever, ever do. One of the things with dahlias is also um, just like what we're doing today is kind of looking at individual plants, seeing what their needs are, and looking for that spider mite. So this time of year, late August, September, we get a little bit of high moisture at night, and then it's dry, hot, and dusty. And that's what spider mite likes. And they go on to the lower leaves. And so that's where we're looking. I'm spraying um, just some of this con this uh, compost tea on and then we will generally peel off those leaves at the bottom of each plant just kind of clean up around the base take care of all the weeds and then just keep that watering schedule going we water for a little over an hour we don't do it every day but it's almost I think it's every third day that we water over an hour I kind of keep an eye on things if it's super hot then we're watering every day and uh, we just don't want to waste water either <laughs> so that's kind of the gist to it if you're growing dahlias inside of a greenhouse that's a whole different ball game it's really hard to do especially this time of year for me the dahlia itself gets huge um, it's taller than me they they love it in there but again pest um, issues can be huge and so a lot of farmers that I know that do this they actually um, water with a spray so not a drip line and that helps keep that spider mite down uh, so some of them have come up with creative ways where the water comes up from underneath and sprays up and then other ones just take in a hose every once in a while and then also peeling down all of the leaves on it as well so that's one thing, if you do have spider mite, uh, taking off the affected area, cutting back the leaves, really spraying something on it like water or a compost tea, and it, the plant will rejuvenate. I've done it and that's how I know. So those are all my little tips for dahlia growing. We're glad you're here with us, but I think it went pretty well, Emma. How do you yeah. feel your fish emulsion? It stinks out here. It does, it stinks really bad. Um, the fish emulsion is good. I, I kept it pretty diluted because it does have a bit of a higher nitrogen number, um, but I diluted it and then I did that also knowing that what Beth is spraying has a very high potassium level. Yeah. So that's what they need for blooms. Um, and that's what we're looking for now is yeah. just I mean, and, and we do have a few dahlias um, that are smaller and they do need a little more nitrogen. So you're just, just keeping going it, a little heavier on those then. And yeah, I'm going a little heavier on those, a little lighter on the bigger plants that don't need quite as much. But um, we've had a lot of success with fish emulsion. When we put it on things, they love it. And I think too, it just comes back to your soil. Like yeah. our soil, for whatever reason, we can get away with that fish emulsion and it just, and the seaweed and... We don't test our soil every year, but we kind of just have figured out over time what works and what yeah. is better. So I was saying it was kind of so, like children yeah. earlier. I said, you know, your plants, well, you don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Someday she'll figure it out. <laughs> but it's like... Each plant has its, and even in each dahlia, like there's some dahlias up in our circle garden, which is in the main gardens, yeah. that are like starving for water right now. So I have to get them some water and then we're going to fertilize them as well. But it's, it's like each individual plant needs something different. And so that's yeah. why we're taking so much time looking at each one of them and making sure that we're either fertilizing it right, giving it more than it, you know, does it have yellowing leaves? What, you know, yeah. all those things that we're looking for right now. Well, and this year it's nice because we downsized the dahlia field and it's just a lot more manageable. Mm -hmm. Quality over quantity. Yeah, that's what we've really focused on this year, especially even in our gardens and what we're doing here on the farm. There's going to be more to come on that, but we're definitely just working on quality over yeah. quantity and not trying to like just bang it out. I don't know. It's a lot of work to do that. And it I, I kind of got a little overwhelmed. We were all overwhelmed yeah. last year. We took on maybe too much. This year has been better and I'm hoping that next year is even better. It just gets, yeah. we, we learn. Yeah, we learn. And that's how gardening is, is you just learn and don't be afraid to like do things, right? Yeah, exactly. Try things. Like we might've just killed all of our plants with our fruit light. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Can't you imagine? I yeah. doubt it. I mean, so many people get really scientific about it. They want to know the exact numbers. We just don't have that personality, I don't we think. We do not. And I think it's because we're creative people, yeah. too. Like, we're able to, like, bend the rules and limits of even, even in, like, floral design. Um, yeah. And even, like, we don't always grow straight stems because we want it to be crooked. 
Yeah. Not on purpose, but sometimes it's really cool because then you can just do these, like, you know, if your dahlia topples over, then you have yeah. the stem that's arching and in a bridal bouquet or in a big compote that you're putting together, a big centerpiece, and you have this dahlia that's just like, yeah, Law! so pretty. We find ways to use everything almost. <laughs> yeah. That's what sets us apart. We get to be creative and unique. Yes. Okay. So I've got not quite half the field done and I'm going to go back to spraying. Yeah. We, we're doing good this morning. We are. One way that makes it really easy for us to remember what everything does in the NPK ratio on fertilizer is that nitrogen, the N, is basically for the green part of the plant. So you think up. So it's gonna be up, down, all around. So up is gonna take care of the stems, the leaves, the overall like look of it almost. Or some of the dahlias that we have have a little bit of yellow on them. So we definitely know that they need a little bit of nitrogen. And then the second one is phosphorus and that's gonna be down. And so whenever you're getting the roots health um, up, then you want to think of the blooms that are gonna be coming on. So whenever we do something that's higher in phosphorus, which is what this comfrey tea is going to do, we know that we're gonna get a lot more blooms going. And then the last one, which is potassium, and that's the K, which I don't understand why it's a K, but um, that kind of just is the overall health of that. So this comfrey tea also has a lot of potassium in it. That's just a good <laughs> thing that I have in my mind because a lot of times I'm like, what? I don't know, for a lot of new gardeners out there, it's an easy way to remember up, down, all around and certain plants have different needs, but I'm always looking for an easier way to remember things like that. There's just a lot to remember, a lot to know. Sometimes, <laughs> Beth, I like think of, we actually know a lot of random stuff <laughs> that other people don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I may not know Everything. things about vehicles, <laughs> nothing, but I do know a lot about plants. <laughs> So the last thing I'm gonna do is um, just walk through the rows. I noticed that a few of the newer dahlias haven't been pinched. I don't know why this year. Some of them just took a really long time to start growing. I'm just gonna check for those and pinch them so that they don't grow in one singular stem and only give us one bloom. As I go through and kind of just clean up the bottoms so that the, some of the leaves aren't touching the dirt, I'm also kind of just weeding a little bit, cleaning up just around the base. I'm not going too crazy with weeding and I'm not going to do every single one, but um, just the ones that need it. for joining us back here at Crowley House Flower Farm, learning all about dahlias and kind of what we do on the farm. If you have a suggestion for us on how you do something in your garden with your dahlias, we would love to hear from you. Just leave us a comment below. And until next time, much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye. Bye.